Good evening. I just want to give just a couple of closing words um, to tell you why women's rights mean so much to me and to share with you the progress that Amnesty has made uh, and will continue to make with your support and your activism. But first, I want to thank all of you for making today so incredibly inspiring. Uh, I have special thanks for our speakers, um, for your passion and your commitment to making women's rights a reality. And looking out and seeing all of you, I notice a lot of young women who joined us today. And you really are the, the future of this human rights movement. And it's your social networking generation that's going to expand this movement through technologies that we can't even imagine today. So thank you for being here. It means so much. And a very special thanks to our incredible, wonderful keynote speaker, Eve Ensler, for her commitment to ending violence against women. It's hard to believe, but her organization, V-Day, is about to celebrate its 15th anniversary. And in honor of that, Eve has launched, as you've already heard today, uh, One Billion Rising, a powerful call to end violence against women and girls once and for all. And I'm really thrilled that Amnesty is supporting this effort. And I hope that each and every one of us will rise up next Valentine's Day and tell the world the violence ends now. I mean, I'm looking out at, you, at all of you and the incredible speakers and everybody who joined us, and I'm really, I can't tell you how, excuse me if I get emotional, but I, I just feel humbled and honored and emboldened by you all, so thank you. For me, the struggle for women's rights started the day I was born. I was born at the height of the uh, Iranian Revolution in Tehran during a time when the status of women was uh, deteriorating at a rampant rate. And my parents wanted to give me the best possible opportunities to succeed and um, the best possible start in life. So they decided to flee and leave to London when I was just 20 days old. But the plight of women back home in my homeland was permanently etched in my social consciousness. And when I was old enough, I uh, traveled across Iran, from Mashhad to, to Tehran to northern Iran. And when I got back to London, I knew immediately that I had to use my freedom to promote theirs, to ensure that my parents' sacrifices had not been in vain. And as is the case with many activists and many of our speakers today, Personal experiences and tribulations throughout our lives can often serve to stiffen our resolve and reaffirm our passion to seek justice for others. As Aung San Suu Kyi said so beautifully, if you're feeling helpless, help someone. It's a maxim, it's a very simple maxim that drives many of us. Some of you may know me as an actress. And when preparing for a role, Often, you have to study the human condition. But our jobs as activists is changing the human condition. That's why my role, the role that I'm most proud of in my life is, is, is my role as activist and spokesperson for Amnesty International USA. I am so honored that I've worked alongside Amnesty for the past three years to use my voice off screen and off stage to speak up for women who are being silenced, who are facing abuse and injustices, particularly in Iran. Women like actress Marzia Vafomer, who was sentenced to a year in jail and 90 lashes for appearing in a film without a headscarf. She was freed after 118 days, but she currently faces a ban of leaving Iran, participating in any, in any films or cultural activities. Women like prominent human rights attorney Nasrin Soutoudeh, who was arrested in September of 2010, on trumped-up charges of propaganda against the state and threatening national security. And she served time in solitary confinement in Iran's notorious Evin prison. She's currently serving a six-year prison sentence and a 10-year ban on leaving Iran and practicing law. Iranian women have proven their tenacity and their dedication to human rights. And as is the case in many countries around the world, women in Iran are the driving force for equality, democracy, and freedom. That's why they've been dubbed Shirzan, or lioness, because of their fearlessness in the face of tyranny. I'm in awe of these women, 
each and every one are heroines in my eyes. And what an incredible example of courage they're setting their children to follow. And today we've heard from several women with the same type of awe-inspiring courage. Women like Jenny Williams, who was arrested 47 times for standing up for the political rights of women in Zimbabwe. Women like Beatrice Mukansinga, who has helped the women of Rwanda heal emotionally and physically from the trauma of the genocide. Jenny and, Will Jenny and Beatrice work every day for the ba basic human rights of others, and they deserve our help in continuing their work. At the core of Amnesty's movement is the idea that every person who is fighting for their rights or the rights of others needs us to stand by them and fight for them. And that's what Amnesty members have been doing for over 50 years. We were there for Aung San Suu Kyi for decades, and we're there today for the members of Pussy Riot. We are on the front lines fighting for basic human rights and preventing abuses and atrocities wherever the need is greatest. Founder of Amnesty International coined the term prisoner of conscience. And ever since then, millions of caring individuals across the world have proven what it means that, that they can actually make the difference between hope and despair, between freedom and imprisonment, between life and death for women, men, and children whose rights are being denied. To stop the suffering of individuals whose rights are being trampled. That is Amnesty's cause. Women's rights are central to Amnesty's mission today. Day after day, we are exposing human rights abuses around the world and campaigning to stop them. We have supported women in the uprisings of the Middle East and North Africa as they work to make sure that their rights are respected, protected, and fulfilled by the new governments of their countries. We have exposed the sexual violence in Nairobi slums, and even as we're gathered here today, Amnesty has issued a report calling on the authorities of Colombia to account for failing to effectively investigate sexual violence against women, thus sending a dangerous message to perpetrators that they can get away with abuse and rape without fear of any consequences. Our work in the US has led to groundbreaking legislation to reverse the high level of sexual violence against Native American and Alaskan Native women, and to, uh, and to address disturbing levels of pregnancy-related related complications and maternal deaths nationwide. In the US, we have worked to achieve progress on several goals, including reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act to include at-risk minorities such as Native American women, Alaskan Native women, LGBT individuals, and immigrants. Safeguarding and supporting women's rights in Afghanistan so that the hard-earned gains of the past decade are not compromised or traded, traded away in peace and reconciliation talks. Making sure that women have a seat at the negotiations table when countries are transitioning from war to peace. Securing and respecting women's reproductive choices and freedoms in the US and globally. Adoption of an arms trade treaty to prevent the violence that impacts thousands of women and girls who are assaulted physically and sexually through the unregulated trade of small arms. This is a critical time for us. If we're to achieve our goals, to prevent gender-based violence and discrimination, to protect reproductive and sexual rights, we are going to need to mobilize like never before. We're going to need many more supporters standing with us to demand change. I urge you to help us advance our women's human rights by joining Amnesty as a member, by signing our petitions, exploring a partnership with us to advance our human rights work, women's rights work, hosting an event highlighting women's rights, or simply contributing to our women's program. I hope that all of you have been as inspired as I have been by today's XX Factor, and that you return to your schools, your organizations, your communities, and your countries with a renewed dedication to helping women and girls. Thank you. Woo.